All right. Seconds. Welcome back for part two of my Subnautica walkthrough series. Um, in this video, we're going to mostly cover some early game uh, resourcing and a little bit of wreck diving, maybe, and some life pods. Um, but before we get started on that, I want to clean up a couple of things that I meant to do in the last video and kind of missed. One of those was that I was going to make a compass because it makes life easier for navigation. The other one is beacons. I always like to put a beacon at my main base, um, especially if it's a fair ways from the life pod. Um, because it does make navigation easier. I can go straight to my base instead of navigating based on where the life pod is. Um, yeah, I almost started there. Uh, a little low on water. Um, two main ways to make water early game are with bladder fish or using salt and um, uh, using salt. And tube coral. Uh, you know, I'm not... Put that hatch on the end. I actually like it better on the end. And there's lots of people debate over which is better, but you can do either, whichever is convenient for you. Um, the advantage to using salt and tube coral is that it makes two bottles at once and they're slightly um, higher value than the ones you get from bladder fish. They give you more water. Uh, the downside is you have to gather two things, a salt and a slice of tube coral, which you can't get until you have a knife. Uh, salt's relatively easy to find. Um, Kelp forest, grassy shallows, it's it's all over the place. Don't grab a couple of them. And tube corals are usually pretty easy to see as long as you're anywhere near the shallows. So the disadvantage of course is that there's no tube coral laying around if you're not in the shallows. So it doesn't work if you're building a base somewhere else. And salt and tube coral just aren't as abundant as bladderfish. Now, what I'm looking for right now is one more fragment for the beacons. One more beacon fragment. It hurts to grab extra resources unless you're already full. See, there goes the Aurora. It's a good thing we didn't wait much longer to hit that other wreck. skunked on yeah early game is the only thing you'll use lead for is that radiation suit but the real downside is you can't wear a radiation suit and a rebreather at the same time so if you want to get anywhere near the aurora you have to wear your radiation suit that's the other reason to go over there before the aurora goes off because it can be kind of a pain if you wait till after Is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds. 
and purifying water. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. before I forget again. And that's the other thing you can do is if you've got a ton of titanium laying around in your run out of inventory space, you can make a couple of titanium ingots. You usually only need mm, seven to ten of them, um, depending on how you're playing and what you're building. All right, now I've got some inventory space cleared. swim faster without something in your hand unless that something is the sea glide <laughs> try not to make too many batteries early game because um, because you get a whole bunch of them when you eventually do the Aurora oh that's the other thing I want to make in here before I forget radio hmm. the radio and the battery charger so apparently you can't pin blueprints from the hab builder menu build those before I forget again oh um, the compass when you build it automatically seats into a slot on your shoulder here. You don't have to do anything to it. So on board. Coordinates attached. We've landed a kilometer from the crash site, but there's radiation in between us and the rendezvous. Request immediate assistance. Six out. Signal coordinates corrupted. Approximate transmission origin recorded to date to bank. Yeah. Now a lot of these um, will give you the actual pod location. Um, some of them won't. Um, this one's pretty easy to find, though. It's right by that other wreck that we looked at last episode. So, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, we'll get that in a minute. I still want to find that other beacon. There's that one we just searched. There should be another one just a little bit further down here. Now, the real downside to exploring anything at night is that the light 
drains your sea glide battery pretty fast. So, wherever possible, you should kind of avoid using it. Those things, if you can find them, are really good eating. They're the most nutritious fish in the game. This gives you extra titanium if you scan something you've already completed. Can't go too far this way or we're going to start encountering radiation. There, this is the one I was kind of looking for. There's a crash fish nest right under there, so we don't want to go super close. You'll find these at several of the wrecks scattered around the shallows and kind of the near edge of the crash zone. Coffee maker. Now that I have that beacon, I'm gonna go back and put one of those together. And then uh oh. That's weird, did it? Yeah it did. Okay. Ah jeez. See what I mean about the radiation? Just a little too close. I kind of wanted to grab a couple of the other... These furniture pieces are all completely option, grab, optional. The grab trap is handy if you need to catch a bunch of fish, but otherwise it's not remotely necessary. stay on this edge of the shallows. Oh, yeah, those things you hear making whale-ish noises, those are the reef backs. They're one of the biggest leviathans in the game, but they're also harmless. Um, unless they have tiger, fish, uh, tiger plants growing on their back, you kind of have to watch that. Um, they'll have mushrooms on them sometimes, and occasionally table coral. Sometimes they'll have barnacles, which will give you either copper or silver. Um, it's usually not worth it to come up here because there are faster ways to get that stuff, but it's nice to know if you happen to be somewhere that doesn't have a lot of limestone and you, you can't find what you're looking for any other way. I wanted to save some of those. I wanted to save some of those scrap metals. Um, because what you can do when you're this close to the kelp is collect a few of them and leave them near your base. And just let the stalkers play with them while you're busy doing other stuff and then come out and find a pile of stalker teeth. Um, but you need kind of a small pile of them to do that. Um, and I had a small pile of them, but then I turned them all into titanium. Oh, 
nifty. Somebody's already been doing the job for us here. So in a speed run, you'd only need four, um, or at least in a 90% glitchless speed run. That's, but that's not what we're doing today. So we're gonna need a few more. So I'm gonna go put this stuff away, back base, build that beacon like I keep saying I'm going to, <laughs> and then uh, come back and collect some more of those. So you can find those sea glides all over randomly, and usually what'll happen is after you go hunting far and wide to get your sea glide, you'd be doing all kinds of other stuff around the shallows and realize you missed half a dozen of them right under your nose. <laughs> to watch out for when they roar like that it usually means that either they didn't have anything to occupy their attention or you got cl too close to their regular drop location they kind of hoard the scrap metal and you'll find a little pile of it here and there that usually is where a stalker's been depositing it and they get mad if you take it Now, when I get back to base, I'm going to actually have to dump most of this to sort it, but that's okay, because I've got some Type 4s in here i got to get out. I talked about this in the last video, but uh, when stalkers pick up Type 4 salvage, they have a 0% chance of dropping a tooth. So it's those you want to go ahead and just pick up and process. rest of those I'm gonna leave right around there because we should be close enough for some stalkers to come play with them later. We'll go check on them after a bit. Okay. Now, now comes the fun part. 
we're gonna go dive into this geyser. This geyser is one of the best places in the early game to gather a bunch of resources quickly. On this first level down here, it sounds like you're taking some thermal damage, but really it's very slow. You don't have anything to worry about. Um, don't swim directly over the geyser because you will take more. But you've got a bunch of quartz. Uh, you've got, I want to say, six, eight of those sandstones on this first level down. You definitely want to have that high capacity tank before you start doing this. Because you don't want to have to be coming back up to the surface every five seconds when you're this far down. Okay. Pretty much clean out these caves here. Oops. I'm taking a little bit of damage, but it's slow. There we go. Lots of sandstone as you start to get below that first level. There's a lot of limestone in this little bay here. This is the lower level. There are two branches off of this. This one here, the narrower one doesn't have very much sandstone in it. It does usually have a couple. A common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual asphyxiation. And if you follow it out, it leads out to the edge of the shallows and this little patch of kelp forest, which is basically right by where I built the base. So go ahead and just drop this stuff off. Now, I like to start off with about a dozen copper and about 10 to 12 gold and silver before I start doing sort of my early game crafting phase. We're not there yet. And then, yeah, we've got plenty of that. Doing stuff with titanium or lithium ingots is one place where even if you're not real fast with a uh, with a fabricator, um, it's handy to have two because they take so long. It's nice to be able to have more than one thing processing at a time. All right, so I don't really need any more lead. That right there is actually maybe just like two or three more. But beyond that, like that's all you need for the entire game. <laughs> the game just gives you way more lead than you'll ever need. Um, now there is also plenty of quartz down in those caves. Um, I'm not really going to get any more right now, because I'm more interested in getting those tier 2 resources that you can get from the sandstone. Um, also, let's see, this goes back to the geyser. There's a little side cave here that's got a bunch more sandstone in it. I'm going to check that radio message, since I'm right here. And we'll go get the rest of the stuff in that other cave. Welcome aboard, Captain. Aurora, this is Sunbeam again. We just picked up a massive debris field at your location. I didn't know how bad... how many of you... I, I didn't know. We're now en route to your location. We're gonna bring you home. Sunbeam out. What we... else can I say? The only time I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR. And I blew it. It's a bad option, all right, but so are all the others. Okay. When you're in a not so bright area, if you can avoid it, don't use your light, um, especially if you're looking for resources, because the outcrops will actually kind of stand out, they'll glow a little bit in the dark. Um, you can actually just kind of you actually kind of restrict your own field of view when you've got the light on so it's sometimes it's just not worth it unless it's truly dark like when we go to the other side of the geyser here in a second especially if it happens at night it will be dark enough in there that you really can't get around without the light and just in case you missed the last video um, 
I do recommend updating your keybind so that your left click is also scrolling up on your mouse wheel. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to hammer out those outcrops. space in this locker before too much longer here. Yeah, and that's the problem when you start with a very small base, you sometimes run out of storage. Yeah, I'll use that one as overflow. in that other locker there, along with food. side of the guys are clean this out. You see what I mean about being a lot darker down here. It's already night outside. bit here gets a little exciting. There's a whole bunch of crash fish right through there. You do not, do not want to touch those stingers. Those drooping stingers do a ton of damage and if you've already been injured by a crash fish or if you happen to run into one after hitting those, um, you may die. Now, the thing about dying is usually you drop everything in your inventory that you have picked up since the last time you were in a vehicle or um, no sorry since the last time you were in a base I'm thinking of below zero below zero if you've been in the sea truck your inventory is saved it's like five or six of them in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swim through wake them all up let them chase me and blow up Oops. waited a hair too long on that one okay that should be all of them Sometimes it takes a second pass if you swim too fast. No, that's it. If you ever, whoop, yeah, I did miss one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you never need uh, cave sulfur, there's an abundance of it here. Ha, ah, running low on oxygen. Now, here's a fun trick. Brain coral. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Yeah, well, I haven't built a rebreather yet. These brain corals make bubbles that refill your oxygen tank. They'll make them in batches of three, um, but they actually refill quite a bit. So you can keep caving if you're down here in this geyser cave where you know that there's a bunch of them, or where you know that there's a specific brain coral you keep coming back to anyway. Oops, missed that one. You don't want to leave it too late because it, it is about five seconds, ten seconds between batches there. But I think that's. That will do for now. Okay, that's it for the sandstone in this part of the cave. And then this bit of cave. It's a little tricky to get through. You can kind of slide around that one. Or down through here. Oh, dang it. That was a mesmer. <sighs> if you look at them when they flare their fins, they hypnotize you and try to make you swim right into them, or they will 
bite you and do a fair bit of damage. Anyway, this cave comes right up in the middle of the toothstone here. If you do happen to get caught by a mesmer, and your screen starts doing that thing and say your primary directive is to swim closer, you can strafe left or right and move away from it. Um, it's particularly risky down here uh, because you can strafe yourself right into the stingers, which is not awesome. look at them side on but if you're looking directly at them when they look at you you can get in a lot of trouble um, also if you just happen to bump into them they'll still bite you <laughs> which isn't great I'm trying to see if I can figure out where he even was free stock tooth so you can see what they look like way more of that than I need yeah I don't know where he's gone There he is. is yeah, see, there he did it. <sighs> okay, I think that's enough. We pretty much cleaned that out. Um, if you follow this ridge out to where the kelp, the shallows, and the grassy plain kind of meet all in one place, there's another cave there that has a bunch more sandstone in it. But I think at this point we have plenty to go on as far as resources in the early game here. Yep, that should be lots. Sconded with. And I have to watch the stalkers to see where they go to get an idea for where the their drop location is. I had all those already. Okay, well that was the next thing we were going to build anyway. Um, so we can go ahead and build that sea moth. Hmm. Well, that plan didn't work so great this time. Because I'm not sure where the stalkers swam off to with the titanium, with the scrap metal. See, he dropped it in a place where the other stalkers couldn't really find it.
close for comfort. If you get gassed by those guys, they do about as much damage as the drooping stingers, and you don't want that to happen. stockpile there and let's see I guess I need to go get some of this Anytime you need a new first aid kit, you can just go get a couple of creep vine samples and make one from fiber. Breather and uh, lots of rebreather and the radiation suit. So I just need a couple of lead. That's what it was. Okay. Alright, so now between the rebreather and the radiation suit. We have enough, we have we have options. We can go deeper than 100 meters safely, or as safely as you can normally, without doubling our rate of oxygen loss. Or we can go into the radiation zone, such as near the Aurora. Um, one of the things we'll do in a future video is um, go to the Aurora and fix the drive core and gather a bunch of resources there too. Uh, before we do that though, ideally we want to have a laser cutter and a propulsion cannon which we do have the blueprints for, but we're not going to do that quite yet. The next thing I'm going to build is the Seamoth. Yeah, see, we have the blueprints for those. We have the resources for those, except for the diamonds. So that's that'll be in the next video. For now, though, I'm going to build the mobile vehicle bay.
for which I need one of these. Uh, one of these, right? Nope. Lubricant. And... Two batteries and some rubber for a power cell. In most cases, you can use, when you're making a power cell or making a tool that requires a battery as a component, um, in original Subnautica, you can just use burnt out batteries just as easily as you can full ones. So save yourself some trouble there. Um, and don't use a full battery for making a power cell. So this is the you're starting to see maybe the reason why I like this base. There's lots of uh, table coral, mushrooms, um, creep vine, all right close, and the guys are right there. So it's, it's really well located for gathering early game resources here. And and I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> and it's close to deep water. You don't want to put your mobile vehicle bay in the shallows uh, because anything heavier than the sea moth or the prawn suit, such as the cyclops or eventually your launch platform, um, have to be built in deep water and it can be kind of a pain because you have to move this a bunch of times. Oh, no, I didn't want to drop it. I wanted to deploy it. There we go. Southwest of the crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Rendezvous coordinates corrupted. Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. Signal location uploaded to PDA. The Seamoth is a fast, safe mode of transport, but remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. Okay. Welcome aboard, Captain. So, that's about it for this video. Covered some early game resourcing strategies. This is a pretty good site for your base. You can also put it kind of over here by the northern coral tube. You get some of the same benefits. You're not far from the geyser. You're close to the tooth zone. Um, and you can use that, you know, that entrance out here in the tooth zone if you want to get into the geyser caves. Um, that's about it for this segment. Next time, I think we're going to go ahead and hit some of those uh, life pods that we've gotten messages about recently and maybe do a little bit of wreck diving. And we'll go from there. All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>